Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode one of Music Industry Insights Worldwide, Volume Two. And today I have Thais with me. Hi, Thais, and welcome to the show. Hi, Saskia. Thanks for having me. It's no problem at all. And can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from, and what you do? So, my name is Thais. Um, I'm from the UK, London to be precise, but I've been living in the UAE for the last nine years now. And I work in the music industry. I started in theatre and slowly gravitated into music, live events, and now I'm working more on the music business side. Amazing. So how long have you been in the industry for? Ooh, so I would say I fully submerged myself into the industry around 2011, 2012. So yeah, over over a decade. Yeah, that's quite a long time. So have you found that the industry's evolved quite a lot in that time that you've been in the industry? And what have those changes been like? Um, So I have seen some changes. I've seen more open conversations about certain topics that weren't so easy for people to digest. I think we're we're having a lot more, we're creating a lot more spaces for these kind of conversations. Um, So I've seen a lot of positive change, actually. Um, being in the UAE in particular, I've definitely noticed a big growth and evolution in the music industry here as well. Brilliant. So let's talk about more about the UAE because that's quite a unique place to be in the industry. So what's it like over there? And especially being a woman in the music industry, um, tell us a little bit more about that. So it's exciting being here, I think, because I saw it, what it was like at the, when I first came over and it was it's still an emerging market. You know, yeah. Um, and when I first came over, I think it was, there were only a few homegrown artists. There was very kind of a small, small community. Now it's great to see it expanding. We have more venues um, popping up for homegrown artists. We have a huge imported um, kind of artist repertoire. So we bring over a lot of artists here into the UAE as well. So, but it's just continuously growing. We're getting a lot of people like coming over for music tourism, which is something that I wouldn't say was necessarily the case when I first came over. But Mm. now, yeah, the growth has been pretty rapid considering the time span. (laughs) And tell us a little bit more about the artists and the style of music over in the UAE. What's that like? Um, It's very diverse. You'll have the artists who are very inspired by the Arab world. So they'll make create music that's influenced by those sounds. But then you also have those who are very influenced by music from the Western side of the world. So like the American kind of drill rap, um, yeah. very indie pop style. So it's super diverse. And I think that's also a reflection of the population here, it's, which is very diverse as a high expat um, yeah. population too. I lived in Morocco for a couple of years, actually, and I thought exactly the same thing because it's it's part of Africa and it's the north part of Africa. And I found people to be so creative. There's such a massive Arab influence, but people are so creative and they've got a massive Western influence as well. And to see that combined, it's a beautiful, it's very, it's a real nice experience actually and people are very creative that's something I really took away from Morocco is everyone's so passionate on making something whether it's something out of nothing or something from music and I thought you know that's something that you can take away is people might not always have money but I think um, especially in the creative side of things it's a release it's a way of an expression and it's doing something positive and I think that's what I really took away from Morocco it's great yeah Yeah, so sorry Um, And kind of like for your music stuff, did you do any musical education before you got into the industry? Did you do any kind of music stuff? Not really. I only just completed my master's in 2021. Okay. Once, but I'd been in the industry for some time before I decided to do a master's in music business. But prior to that, my experience really came from hands on just getting into the events, live music event space, and then it kind of evolved and I found my path through that. Amazing. So would you say that you got the kind of experience from your own kind of ethic, your work ethic, your personality, you went out there, you kind of found jobs that you that you related to, that you enjoyed, and that it kind of spread from that? Yes, definitely. And just having really inspiring people supporting me and being in the um, higher roles as I was kind of going into music and showing me the ropes and really giving me a lot of time, that also contributed to it. That's a really important part you make, actually. Would you say that your networking skills have been an essential part of you kind of growing in the industry? 
Uh, networking has definitely helped. I don't know how good my skills are. I'm still working on it. But uh, no, it's definitely a valuable thing that I think everyone should utilize that tool of being able to network and having a network. It's definitely essential to push through in the industry. I totally agree with you. I think it's it's a very social industry and it's not as big as what people generally think it might be. Um, and a lot of people know other people. So I find it very it's a really interesting place to be. It's very, it's full of like-minded creatives, which I really enjoy. Everyone's passionate about the jobs they do. Um, and I really think it's about getting out there and meeting new people and just telling them what you're about, what you do, and giving yourself a bit of self-promotion. Because I think if you're not willing to promote yourself and your skills, then no one's going to do that for you. Would you find that's a good tip to pass on? Oh, definitely. It's true, you know, and I think it's important that especially, you know, with recent reports that have shown that women, for example, or non-binary people are less likely to push themselves forwards in certain spaces. Yeah. So I definitely think it's an important tip. Like everyone should have that skill of being able to self-promote, put themselves out there and really just connect and build the, their network. Excellent. I think that's an, a great point you make. So as you've accessed the industry, you've come into the industry, you've started working across different departments and you've built your skills. What kind of ch challenges and barriers have you faced accessing the industry and working it inside of it? Um, I do feel that the industry can have a hierarchy that can seem come across as quite untouchable sometimes, especially for someone like I remember when I first started out and I remember looking at people in high positions thinking, how can I connect with these people? How can I just have a conversation with them? So there is, I do feel that does exist sometimes even now when I speak to artists who still feel that there is this barrier for them to be able to connect to people and just ask people questions because there's this hierarchy that is um, existent. So that was a challenge I had faced, but I feel like now as you, as you network and you get to know people, it's a bit easier to slowly access certain people and places but it's still it does have a barrier it does um restrict you sometimes and it has restricted me I think other challenges I have had people or maybe it's me but I find that people don't always take you seriously when you present yourself especially as a woman um I have I have felt that sometimes when you go into a space and people kind of go mm, who are you what do you know yeah. um, so but yeah, I think those have been my main challenges, but things I've kind of been able to navigate around or just digest and move on. <laughs> Brilliant. It's so inspirational to hear that as well, because sometimes I think you think, am I the only one that goes through this? Am I one of the only people that has to go through these challenges? And I think when you look around at the diversity of the industry, you can see that there's a lot of different struggles from different sections of different communities. And I think that's really interesting. And to look at that as, especially being a black woman in the industry, how do you find that as well? Like what kind of challenges have you found? Do you feel isolated at times and misunderstood? To be really honest with you, I've actually found, especially because I took some, not time out from the industry, but I was also working in a live performance, like performing arts venue for quite a while. So I felt like I kind of, took a step out of the industry for that time while I was doing that, just to focus more on different aspects of the events. And going back into the music industry, I actually felt a little bit more connected. And I felt that there were like, I don't know, I just felt there were more black, there was a strong network of black women who were like-minded black women who I could connect with. So I actually found in comparison to other industries, the music industry gave me that um, opportunity to really connect with other black women who've face similar challenges and similar accomplishments. So um, I haven't, yeah, I've, I've actually, I feel quite comforted in the music industry. <laughs> That's nice to hear, actually. And you feel supported and you feel that there's a community of people like yourselves that support each other. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important to highlight as well, that I think the music industry has got issues and we're trying to solve those issues as we're going along, but we are making progress. And I think that's an important point to make is, um, I think we are going in the right direction, but we just need to have more conversations and more education. So kind of around education, how do you feel around that kind of area of the music industry? Do you think we're doing a good job around educating the industry on equality and diversity, acceptance and different communities and challenges? Do you think we're doing a good job on that? Definitely. And I know like people like yourself and there's other movements as well, like Black Lives in Music and all these other amazing um, organizations that are really pushing through 
and sharing data, sharing experiences, bringing people together to talk about their experiences to really highlight um, the improvements that need to be made in the industry. I think, so I definitely think the education side is there. I think now it's just about seeing that being implemented in the workspaces and in different parts of the industry as well. But I think as far as education and having people who are advocating for this change, yeah, I think people are doing a really good job. Really, really good job. That's what we like to hear. Um, So if there was any improvements that we could make, what improvements would you like to see happen in the next 12 to 18 months? Mm. I would just like to see the uh, diversity agenda really continue to push through like it is now, but keep it to keep that momentum going. Yeah. And I read a really interesting on Key Change EU about the difference between tokenism and actually implementing inclusion. And so for me, it's about going from, yes, okay, you might represent the underrepresented, but then what do you do past that point? Are you going to make sure that they are included in this? Are you going to really change that infrastructure to make sure that it is an inclusive space? So that's some of the things I would like to see in action in the next few months, years. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that one. I think we're doing a great job. Um, but some things that do concern me are maybe groups that are more becoming a little bit more segregated than what we used to. So I think we're working great on, on highlighting the issues, but we need to be more inclusive. So instead of having women-only groups, trans-only groups, black women-only groups, we need to bring everyone around that table together and we need to sit and have these conversations. And I think that way we'll all make a bigger impact and much more of a positive change. And I think that's what we're all trying to do, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I completely agree with you. Like a unified approach will definitely have a bigger impact than everyone in their separate groups trying to push a very similar agenda. Definitely. Definitely. I totally agree with you on that one. And do you think there are kind of any cultural and age differences in the industry at the moment? And if so, would you like to see any of that change? Hmm, That's a very good question. Um, There are some differences. I think age, like eras, things are very different, different times. So people have different attitudes. A lot of people have evolved the way they see things and are very they've adapted to how society is but I still do think there are some very kind of archaic approaches um, and attitudes that are still being pushed into the industry especially by people in higher places yeah so that's having an impact and culturally I mean being out here in the UAE where they you know they have a very different culture to what I was used to in the when I was in the UK I have seen how culture and music have very contrasting values in some cultures. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But I've also seen how these cultures have, like, especially in UE, it's very open now. Like, it's opened up to music. It's really fully embracing the the power of music. So I do think that culture is, um, there are differences in the industry for sure. But I am seeing positivity, like, and people seeing that, okay, this this wasn't necessarily the right way to go about things before, but we are moving forward. Yeah. And I think it's the same with people who were in different, you know, different ages. I do think that's, yeah. Think that's <laughs> a, a question a... threw me off. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you on that one as well, actually. And I was thinking about this a few months back and I thought, do you think politics is interlinked with the music industry? Because I've really noticed a big impact on who's in power and what's kind of being pushed forwards. Do you think that also has an impact on diversity in the industry? Because it's something I've really been thinking about lately. You know, that's, that is a very interesting thought. And I think it, it does. You know, you'll have some political parties who are in power who don't necessarily support certain working classes or certain agendas, which then create this isolation and they kind of exclude people, some communities from being able to access creative industries, you know, so I, politics definitely plays a role for sure. Yeah. Most definitely. But do you think it's the people inside it that can make that real change and that can kind of, because I think one thing that does worry me is I think we make so much progress, but then when you've got certain people, like you said, in certain places that are not willing to see those changes happen, do you think that that causes some kind of friction in the workplace and how we can kind of evolve 
or do you think that's something that kind of gives us more more kind of inspiration to make that change and kind of more empower empowering us even more than what it already does I actually think it has the power to do both. So I think it definitely causes tension and friction, yeah. especially depending on who, like what the organization is, the establishment, maybe they're more dependent. They need this support from the government to be able to enforce certain things or to get that support. But I also feel that then on the other corner, you'll have people like, well, if they're not going to support this, we are. And they come together and they push through. So I think it does both. It creates that friction, but it also does motivate and inspire people to step in and fix it. Totally, totally. Yeah. Thank you for answering that one. Um, and the last question that we have for you is, what are your major successes to date? And when? So do you have any up and coming events or any kind of things that you would like to share with us? Oh. <laughs> so I think, so a few days ago, I actually attended a talk on um, DEI and how we can really push it into different workspaces. And it made me reflect on what I'm doing with my company that I founded quite a few years ago, but I've only just activated it in the last year, um, Snap and Boom. And I felt that that was a big accomplishment for me because Snap and Boom, like DEI is very important. It's something I want to make sure I'm enforcing. But Snap and Boom was built on that. Like, I think it was kind of like the idea came from how can I have a space that represents people who don't feel that they're ever really represented well or who walk into spaces and don't see anyone who they can relate to they can connect with so for me I feel that's a great accomplishment just being able to build a business that really seems to have value to a lot of people a lot of artists I've met a lot of um, other music business professionals and people in the industry um, so that's a great accomplishment and just being able to work with artists and empower them Amazing. And just support them and fight in their corner. It's something I don't usually think about often, like, oh, I've done this. But I think attending that talk and seeing how important it is for people, I thought, okay, well, actually, that's what I'm doing. And that's what I have been doing just by default. It's not something I've had to force. It's not, there's no tokenism in, in my approach. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's something that I've been really proud of. And so now I'm planning to launch an artist development program which will kind of walk artists through different stages. I'm going to be collaborating with quite a few industry professionals who are going to come in and kind of do workshops and Q and A's and stuff with the artists as well, and just kind of mentor them. And then I'll be doing workshops uh, myself just to kind of connect artists with professionals and so on, and just kind of build the community. So. That's fantastic. Have you got any links or a website where people could go and check out the work that you do? That's so fantastic and inspirational. And if anyone wants to check that out, is there anywhere they can find you or they could contact you? Yeah, so I'm very good on email, which they can find on my website, which is um, www.snapandboom.com. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate all of your time today and answering all of these amazing questions. Um, we're going to be posting this up and it's going to teach other people that want to access the industry and, and also educate people that are already in the industry on how we can better improve the access and the barriers that people face. So we we'll really appreciate that. Thank you so much for taking your time out and I hope to get to see you again soon. Thank you, Saskia. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording soon. Let's stop that one. Um, okay.